Hello, hello. Captain Megazenon, long time no see. I hope you are feeling better this week. It's great to be back with another stream and welcome everybody. I'm gonna try to organize my windows a little bit so that I keep an eye on the chat. Okay, great. That's good to hear Captain Megazenon. I am doing fine. Um, for those of you who are following, it's, you know, Ramadan, so fasting and a lot of stuff, but I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. We will get this bird started very quickly today and uh, we'll be on our way. So we are doing conventional navigation today, uh, VOR to VOR. Uh, we have two stations that we are going to tune and we'll take it from there so it's going to be a little bit longer stream because this bird is not the fastest but oh it's awesome looking and um, I, I miss DC-6 a lot so I wanted to come back to this aircraft all right let's jump in and see and you guys can catch along uh, when I start doing this we will use the uh, the artificial flight engineer but let's just do the ramp manager and uh, get our fuel and loads so we'll take um, we'll take 500 there we'll take 60 passengers uh, the fuel should be fine we have more than enough uh, we'll take a little bit more let's take like 3000 pounds of um, payload options realistic engine damage start icing circuit breaker failure I will leave it out for now uh, realistic AP engage yep that's all good it's been a while since I did the DC6 as you can tell our engines are looking fine da -da -da. let's get the pre-flight done and I know a couple things here that I will be doing so uh, battery power ground power on we'll turn on the gens and emergency light seat belt signs position nice to steady entrance lights we can open that too um, what else down here we'll turn on the tank selectors to full forward all right prop pitch is full forward that's set what am i missing here cow flaps i believe needs to be open all the way oops i'm trying to remember this stuff uh, without using the the flight engineer the artificial engineer but that is what i remember and this inverters needs to come on This up, oh, up. Oh. oh, it's still the zoom is just driving me nuts. Okay, inverter is normal. Let's do the cockpit pre flight. Completed. See, voice recorder. There was only a couple Assistant. switches I forgot, and I know what those are. Oil coolers and cow flaps. One of them is this guy here. Fuel and fluids. Checked. We'll set the cabin temperature to 72 and we'll set our pressurization to, we'll fly it around like probably 12, 1300 feet. So that is 10, 11, 12, let's do 13. Yep, that will do. Hey, Moto. Hi, how are you? Hi. Not too bad. Closed. You're flying today or you're watching? Uh, just watching there. Okay. How's, how's family? You had a gathering, I guess, right? Yeah, that was fun. We had a lot of fun that day. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we burnt a Christmas tree. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They had their leftover Christmas tree and some other scrap wood and we had a big bonfire. Oh, that's good. Bonfires, I like those. Yeah. 
Okay, we are we are there to start our engines. So let's do this. Um, he has the boost pump on. Magneto will turn it on momentarily. Uh, what I want to do is I want to tune the frequency first for our first one, which is 109er. So that's going to be our active. What's going on? Why can't I tune the radio? Okay. 10900, that's tuned. And then our secondary will be standby 112.3. So that is okay, decimal 3. That's going to stay on standby. And over on that side, we'll do the opposite 112. Decimal 3 as the active and 10900 as the standby. Ta-da! Alright. That's there. We are ready to start our engines. Engine 3. Mixture. Other rich. Count the blades. Magnetos to both. Six. Nine. Nine. Hit that. Hit that. There we go. I hope that's a good start. Looks like it. Nope, that's not a good start. She stopped. What happened? We have fuel. We have the boost pump. We have the ignition. What's going on here? So the starter is there. Boost pump is on. doing wrong okay auto rich mixture let's try this one more time interesting not sure why it didn't happen Three, six, nine, twelve. okay this time I think we got it running. Cool. Let's set the engine gauges and RPM to something reasonable. Not like that. That's too high. Okay. You gotta be idling around, what, a thousand? Probably. Alright, so uh, let's start the other one. Engine number four, magnetos to both boost pump to on and then the mixture to auto rich and there we go Three, six, nine, twelve. come on you can do this all right beautiful I'm not sure why I am seeing this texture outside when I have the different camera views. No, not beautiful. She stopped again. Okay, let's try this again. She likes a little bit more throttle at the beginning, I guess. So let's let's give her a little bit more throttle. Is everything cool? Yeah. All right, let's try this one more time. This time we're we're okay. That's better. Now let's keep going for the other ones. So engine number two next. Magnetos to on. You can start counting. I know what I forgot. Boost pump. Okay, let's do this again. <sighs> OK. 
come on, come on, come on. All right, better. Beautiful. Okay. Engine number two. That's done. Now last engine. Engine number one is boost pump. Mixture auto rich. And we are ready to do it. Let's start counting. This should do. This should be everything. Nope, she stopped again. I'm not sure what's going on here, guys. It should start like that, but it's not wanting to. So, interesting. And this could be something about my Honeycomb Bravo mixing with the controls. Looks like now we have an engine, good engine start. Yep. It, okay. It's an old plane. <laughs> I know she is grumpy. Yeah. She is a grumpy old lady. We know that. <laughs> for I'm surprised sure. you aren't flying the uh, the Boeing 24/7. Uh, well, that thing is too slow. So we, I should have. I mean, <laughs> it, I could have chosen a you know closer airport and flew that one, but still not super comfortable with it because I failed both engines three times up in the air and ended up ditching the aircraft so <laughs> uh -oh. so I need to learn that a little bit better before I can use it in a live stream because that aircraft is super complex I'm telling you okay he can set everything up now Oh, our course for first VOR station is what? 8-6. So I need to set that here. So 6, oops, 8-5, 8-6. That it is. That's our VOR course. And let me take a look at chat. Who is here, who is not? I think we are doing a private flight today, guys. I don't know who is here, but it looks like you, Captain Megazenin. And myself, Moto. Oh, I'm and here. Oh, Mark is here. Okay. Mark's here. All I'm right. A late. That's fine. That's and fine. That's fine. Is here. That's fine. With the CRJ. Oh, you are flying the, the CRJ, CRJ, so yeah. I'll, so you're probably going to be faster. Oh, this is loud. How is the sound on your end? Is it too loud, Moto? You are watching the stream, so you can you can help us. Uh, fine-tune the volume levels is it too much like this from the interior or is it okay sounds good uh, sounds fine okay you see me okay all right mark is there so I'm gonna taxi to that side of the runway so all the way to that end uh, we will take off from there that will that will be runway one eight, okay, and then we'll fly runway heading and make a left turn to intercept our flight plan routing. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting one because we are flying VORs today, conventional navigation, no GPS flight plan. Parking brake is off, and off we go. She started rolling right away. So rudder check, tap the brakes. Brakes are working. Flight controls check. And yep. Hey, sim pilot, looks like you're flying a jet. The rendering's all incorrect again. Oh, really? Yeah. Twin yeah, this is jet, definitely not a jet, jet uh, Mark. It's a little bit like A330. Oh. Uh, 
I don't know when Microsoft is going to fix fix this model matching. Okay. It does identify you as a DC six as well. It's a generic jet, though. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's 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 not good when you have that kind of stuff happening. Okay. I think it used to be better. I don't remember. Yeah, it used to be better. Year. Maybe with the with the last update, it got worsened. I don't know. But anyway, um, I think that's something I have to live with now. On your end, I am a jet. On my end, this is a DC-6. Not the fastest. And I was flying DC-6 just to remember last night. I had hard time climbing about 12,000. She, she was not wanting to do that. I don't know... I can't remember if I had to engage the superchargers after 12,000 to keep going to higher altitudes. Can't remember that. So I think that's more than likely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this 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 we can try today because we have to climb up to 14,000, maybe even more. I just set it to uh, the pressure cabin pressure to 14, but it's not gonna hurt to go up to 15 and save some fuel on the road. All right. I think the speed is fine. Wind is favoring that par that side of the runway, as you see the wind sucks. We have a north wind. Yep. Oh no! Wind is favoring the other end. It's going to be a tailwind. Well, we have to live with that. I am all the way here. I'm not taxiing back all the way to the other end of the runway. So it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it will. It will probably make me uh, struggle a little bit, but let's do this. First pops. Not a short takeoff land. Ch short takeoff aircraft. First pops on Yeah, she will. She will need some Cross runway. That's for sure. Light tanks and cross feed off. Autopilot and COVID. Off and cold. Hydraulic system. Down, forward. Can join to the other end so we can play chicken taking off. We can chip. Okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could have checked the winds, uh, the metar information before deciding this side of the runway, but the decision is already made. So. Die is cast. Yep. Oh yeah, happy Ramadan by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of uh, like our Christmas or something, right? It's a big deal. Oh, uh, it's it's a big deal. I mean, yeah. At the end of there's a there's a celebration. But it's all about understanding people who suffer. It's not just, you know, God has nothing to do with me staying hungry all day long if I'm not learning anything from it. So <laughs> And some people do it like that. Okay, I need to stay hungry and that's about it. Really? I mean, you're just wasting your time if, if that's it. You could do that, but then I get low sugar, I'd faint. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I okay. skip breakfast, I'll do that. Um. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, let's see. Okay, we are... What's our gross... Uh, what's our weight? And why not seeing the baggage, passengers, fuel? 91? Okay. We are a little bit heavy, I guess. Don't you think? So, I think we need to do a wet takeoff, but we'll try our chances with dry. Okay. is the, the the flight engineer will take care of the engines and bump it up to take off the thrust setting i think which is 52 inches 30 inches stabilized cal flaps cal flaps cal flaps set full power please going full power there we go This weird texture, I'm not sure where it's coming from. Strange. 
Yeah. Full power right. set. Full power set. Nice looking uh, livery though. Yeah, that that I found on flight some that teal. I said like, look, you know what? This looks nice, so I'm gonna fly this one. All right, Mike, Mark, I'm coming to play chicken. I, I think I'll just wait for you. Okay. <laughs> so far, so good. She's having hard time speeding up, though. I need to get up to 100 knots before I can uh, rotate. So. The runway is about to end. I hope I don't crash in those trees and start all over again. Uh, no, 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 we'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> there we go. Big old bird. That does look heavy. Oh, she's heavy. I heard the climbing. Yeah. Gaining speed though. Three, four hundred feet per minute, but I need to gain speed to bring the flaps in, and then he's gonna set. Uh, up. Flaps going up. Climb. He's gonna set the uh, uh, cruise climb power. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are climbing a thousand feet per minute after getting rid of the flaps, so which is good. Meter power. Meter power. Okay. And what did I say? We are going to make a left turn, right? So let's start doing that. You are still setting up, Captain Megazen? I'll, I'll catch up. Um, you have a faster plane than I do, so you will probably catch up very quickly. I'll wait a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay, we set the climb power, so I'm gonna try to get the needle to the center and get on our flight path okay. should do what's our current heading? ok, almost 030 so that should get us back to our uh, flight pad and I can focus on climbing that's too steep though we can climb a thousand feet per minute let's trim her a little bit and 160 knots is I think the best climb speed for this aircraft and looking for the needle <coughs> to start moving to the center can climb a little bit faster can pick up some speed just climb alright we'll do 1500 for now and then we'll worry about that when the speed drops down a little bit. Alright, don't we have the lead needle moving yet? Oh, the weather is jumpy. We have some pockets, looks like. Oops. Oh, I hate the zoom logic of this, this sim. I need to fix that, big time. Alright, we'll pass through these clouds, no problem. The weather is warm enough so that, you know, no, no icing conditions, at least at this altitude. The weather should be, what, 20 degrees Celsius, so, yeah, no problems there. Oh, the needle is coming, so let's turn heading 086, that's what the heading was, right? So I'm gonna probably overshoot that a little bit. Yep. More than what a little bit. What did you bit. say the heading was? 086. Yeah, I need to keep turning. Yeah, it's going to be a little while until I catch the VOR needle and make it to the center, or I can use the autopilot to help me, which is always an option. 
that should center itself as we fly. Alright, let's level the wings and then try this out. So let me remember, I was supposed to... Turn this on first and then that lever will engage the autopilot and then we'll go to the localizer and that should start tracking the VOR. Yep. I guess that's what it's trying to do now. I hope you don't turn around all the way. <laughs> what is our course setting? 86? So I'll go for 85. That's much more closer I think. To our flight plan routing, we are climbing nice, the speed looks good, and we can control the climb with this little wheel. Going forward, and I can jump outside and take a look at you guys. Oh, Captain Megazin is already like at 8,000 <laughs> feet. Look at that. It's up there. Yeah, he is. Mark, are you flying the TBM? Yeah, I'm just catching up here. I didn't adjust the altitude or anything. I don't have my settings, but okay. Now. Okay. It's still cool to see these big old airplanes. I mean, I kind of like this aircraft. Uh, you know, it's PMDG, like. It works like a charm. There is nothing I complain about this aircraft. It's 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 great. I'm telling you. Oh, once, once you once check. you learn it, is it uh, pretty predictable? Yep. Or? So let's let's take off the flight engineer from there. Turn it off, and we need to increase our carburetor heat and oil temperature needs to stabilize. So oil temperature is a little bit on the high end, and to increase this to warm up the carburetors. So I think 20% should do at this type of air temperature. We'll check that because we have realistic engine failures turned on so we don't want to fail the engines mid-flight. Yep, all green checks out so oil temperature is all on the high side. To compensate that we need to come up to here and mess with the cow flaps as far as I remember. So we need to open those a little bit more to cool the oil. That should bring the oil temperature back down to green. I see that coming down already. Hopefully it's moderate stress strain so it should hopefully it will go back to green. I think instead of that, I need a wheel like this. This is too, yep, too far. So I need something like this to see the overhead. And this plane has a bigger overhead than anything I have seen so far. So let's open them a little bit more. And I hope I am remembering this correctly. No, that's going to make the cylinder head temperatures cool. So no, we don't want that too. So okay, let's roll it back. Okay, all temperature should come down after climb, I guess, so it is, I think, expected for that to be high during climb, I guess, maybe that's why. We are just passing, say, getting to 7000, so, and we'll get that. Beautiful. Check the chat to see I'm not missing anything. No, I'm not. Okay. Let's see who's here, who is not. I can't see anyone. So if you are watching, guys, say something in the chat so that I can greet you, okay? So I'm gonna stick to flying right now. Looks like you're really quiet there, Sim Pilot. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, YouTube statistics is showing that there are 12 concurrent viewers at this point, 
so I don't know maybe they just like to watch and uh, enjoy the show uh, which is fine all right we are flying that we are we have no sign of the other one or picking up the signal of the other one yet climbing a little bit slow now so which I don't know I like that but I think we need to keep the speed at least around in this little white range still trying to remember maybe we can do a little bit better we can climb a little bit faster maybe we will think about because we are heavy that's that's part of the reason why she doesn't want to climb too so we are going to eventually need the, the superchargers how are we doing on the carb temp is getting colder so let's go to 25 all right we should be all good yep engines are looking great passing 8000 yeah, I'm gonna I think stick to this this climb rate 700 ish per minute. That would be our cruise until we are our climb until we are not able to climb no more, and we will we will worry about turning on the superchargers when we get there. So we should be able to make it to 10,000 no problem. After 10, 11, that's where the problem starts. She is losing speed, that's for sure. Anyway, let's do some sightseeing. Oh, Captain Mega Zenin is almost like at our destination. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He is there. Oh, there's Kriya another DCC, Kriya Kryonic Saucer. Was that Hugh? No. That's not Hugh. Can't remember who Kryonic Saucer was. Yeah. I don't know. My memory doesn't serve me well today, so I don't know who, who, who that was. Can't remember. I know it's one of our, uh, you know, regular people who flies in the live streams but can't remember if it was Hugh or uh, who else can't remember I I'm tempted to say it's Hugh but I don't know what's a uh, Coco who Hugh was Coco oh yeah he was Coco can read okay you're right yeah. So who was Cryonic Saucer? Can't I don't know. Can't remember. Really can't remember. I'm sorry. All right, nine thousand, barely climbing, five hundred feet per minute. I think we are going to keep this, or we will do this. Look how dramatic change it's bringing if I turn on the superchargers. Ta-da! BMEP is going all the way to 250. Manifold pressure climbing to 50, so it's right at the edge. I don't know how long we can keep the superchargers on. I don't want to stress. Uh oh, look at that. Catastrophic stress. Oh no, we don't want that. Do we? Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There is something wrong about that. Just have to uh, pull the throttles back or something. That's probably what I need to do. So right now we are set for what? 32 inches? Yep. Because oh, oh, oh. you remove the uh, manifold pressure. Okay, so. 32 inches. And then let's try this again and then drop the manifold pressure for. Okay, it's looking more reasonable now, isn't it? But it is still saying like excessive BMEP, so BMEP needs to come down. Which means I need to come back to maybe the same manifold pressure 
using the superchargers or maybe even higher, a little bit higher, like 35 inches, 150 BMEP, and that should maybe do the trick. Let's see how we are climbing. Okay, carb temp is hot. Is it? That's oil temp. Carb. No, it's cold actually. Are we climbing? Uh, not too much difference, but we are climbing. Let's check this. Carb intake temperature would probably be colder because it's uh because it's forced induction now. Yep. Yep, you're right. That's that's part of the reason I believe. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I did the wrong way. I need to cool it down. Right, 15, 15, 15. You know what I'm thinking after dealing with this vintage aircraft for the last week or so? <laughs> Those pilots are brave pilots, I'm telling you. There's a lot to do, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, like, those people, they were putting their life in the line and they are getting in the cockpit, I'm telling you. That's how I feel about it, so I'm gonna increase the troubles a little bit more, so that we can climb at least. All this is automated now. Oh yeah, everything is now auto thrust, you know, FMC, uh, aircraft systems telling aircraft you what's wrong, uh, you have ECAM displays, you have tests, and whatnot, so yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. This is all different now. So I think I'm gonna set this to 40 inches manifold pressure to climb reasonably without hurting the engines. And that should keep us at the edge of the BMEP where that starts. So moderate stress, I think you have to handle that. So that one is high stress, so let's come back on engine 4 a little bit. And oil temperature is getting hot, that's fine. We will manage this, we don't... I think we are going to climb to, like, what? And uh, we will just climb to 12,000 and set cruise power there. I don't want to stress the engines too much. Carp temp is cold, I think we are going to leave it back for now. What about the speed? Speed is doing fine. So if we keep this, we will get to 12,500 feet, which is fine, and then we will set and tell our AFU to set for cruise. To do some more research on the engines on these I old have things. To, I have to do some more reading, yep. It's pretty interesting how they uh, use superchargers to operate at higher altitudes. Uh, I don't know if we need to use water to cool it down though, you know. Uh, yeah. There is that water valves over here. Uh, right here. So these are yeah. used to cool the engines. So if I turn them on, the world war II fire it should too. help with the engine cooling. But yeah, I let me not mess with things that I don't remember exactly. So, but that's injecting water so that it's keeping the cylinder head temperatures cooler. See, that was going to green. So that's how you manage that when you have the superchargers. You have to inject water to cool it down. But what we are, where we are? Okay, we are coming up to twelve thousand now. So let's do the altitude control on that should level us off and we can tell our AFE to set cruise power turn off these now we should go back to normal yep coming to green and we need to worry about carb temp a little bit so maybe go back to 20 ish or 25 and stay there. Okay, 
Okay, we are cruise power set, so we are traveling what? We will pick up some speed. And How fast are you traveling? I am not passing 140 now, but I'm trying to get to 160 uh, knots indicated, so that will be... I'm doing 170-ish ground speed right now. But trying to get to you know somewhere here so that we don't go too slow. Oh, Mark, looks like you are also in front of me. Or I got a little ahead of you there. Oh, you're right right. there. Okay, I see. You. Captain Megavenin is going to land and then start his round trip back to where we departed. It will be still like midway. You can you can lap us. That's the cruise speed. How are we doing on fuel wise? We can probably. Yeah, we have a lot of fuel. That's for sure. We can probably go a little bit faster by you know taking this guy off and managing the throttles ourselves. So we are set for what? 150 BMEP, 35 inches manifold pressure. If we go a little bit higher than that, it's not gonna hurt, but it will give us some more speed. We will burn a little bit more fuel, that's for sure. But I'm not worried about that. Alright, that should get us to at least 280-ish, which will give us a ground speed of over 200, 10, 20 knots, and we have a tail, we have a headwind-ish wind coming from uh, 0, 0.59 nine or at 8 knots, so not too bad. So we should be fine like this. Uh, we have a long way to go though, that's for sure. Formatting your computer makes you lose a lot of things. I downloaded a lot of little man map performance files for all MSFS aircraft. Now all of them are gone. Let's see if I can find the DC6 again. So flight simulator. Oh, DC... Oh, no, that's too another. DC6B, I found it. Okay. No, I need to find that. Download. Copy this. And paste it to where? Here. Alright, let's see now if I can open that. Alright. That is now done. It will have a more accurate calculation of top of descent. Hey, Sim Pilot. Yep. That, 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 that lane, according to Wiki, even the slowest carriage should be able to go maybe 11 miles per hour, which is 270 knots. That should be able to really rip along. You think? I'm doing that's something wrong? Says, or is maximum, it maximum speed 270 knots. Um, what am I doing that's right now? I'm doing 200 there. right now. Or, yeah. So you think we should we should be able to go faster than this? Yeah, I'll try to find the cruise orbit. Yeah, I have to remember this aircraft and oh, read cruise, a little bit. No, Maybe cruise, cruise, is cruise is 270. Is no. that indicated or true ground speed? Um, it just says I should be air. Should be uh, the air speed. So right now I'm air, air my airspeed at cruise it says the performance file I downloaded for little man it says 240 knots for the that's uh, probably about right so my ground speed is 244 right now 
my airspeed is 200 about 200 I keep accelerating slowly so maybe yeah, I'll get there better than that. yeah I don't know uh, maybe we, I need to go higher on the BMEP maybe I'm not I don't Service know ceiling, oh, the RPM maybe is too low I don't know 2,000 foot service ceiling, so probably you assume you would go higher. Yeah, I should have climbed higher. Like, I remember uh, in previous flights with this aircraft, I remember climbing without using superchargers, no problem. Maybe it's something PMDG will update, maybe something is broken after the sim update. I don't know. I don't it's know. It's hard to know. Yeah, and I haven't checked the. Uh, the PMDG Ops Center. Maybe there was an update to this aircraft that I didn't catch. But well, I think I think it's fine. I think we are we are doing just fine. Doing 210, 220. We should come all the way to here. You're right. That's that's our cruise speed. 240. We should we should have no problems reaching this this dot right here. Because I remember getting here, and that's a, a little bit bigger dot or in size which yeah. means this has something to do like this should be where you are at you know is that our way uh, causing us issues is that the new weather prop physics whatever yeah, I don't know I'll go a little bit higher on the BMEP you know what I'll just do it once oh, we have quite a, I have quite a headwind here I'm showing uh, 83 knot wind so that oh could that be might be why sorry, 8 knot wind 84 degrees so it's not the wind Hold on, let's see if we can... Oh, we don't see the wind information with live weather. Maybe you guys can tell me in, in your uh, cockpits if you are getting the wind information. But you're right, we should yeah. get up to 240, no problem. Yeah, we're only, I'm only... We've got about an 8, eight knot headwind here. That's what I'm seeing here, 7 knots headwind. It shouldn't slow us down that much. So I'm not sure if that's our way, maybe? Because we have... We have tons of fuel. That is like too much fuel for this aircraft to travel this much distance. This is like probably enough fuel to cross the Atlantic with this aircraft. And I didn't pay attention to how much we need. So we are we are overweight. That's that's for sure. Look at our weight. Ninety thousand pounds. Sure, not sure the relationship between weight and, uh, and your airspeed. Yeah, I don't I know. That's just an issue for takeoff. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right too. I don't know, I'm not sure, Mark, why I'm not getting what I need to be getting from this aircraft's performance. And mixture 2 lead. Thank you very much, okay. Let's do auto reach. Oh, somebody locked the mixture. Alright, CHT is probably a little bit hot now. Let's see. Cylinder head temperatures are nearing the red, so we need to open the cowl flaps a little bit. Maybe you could use the water cooling. I, I can use that too. Or a little bit to help with the cylinder head temperatures. Now Outside air should... temperature is 3 Celsius, so it's not that cold. Okay, so that's the I other. I would have uh, imagined it would be protocol to have the water on while the supercharger's on. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I remembered something. This is why probably piloting. Maybe that, or oh, the mixture is off, okay. Because one of the aircraft that I have is still in beta and it was requiring me to have auto mixture on to work properly. I thought maybe that's what's causing the issue, but looks like it is not. So CHDs are coming back to normal, now we have carbs getting cold. I think we can turn off the order injection now see what it does. Oil temperature is high. Yeah. 
So hard to manage, man. I mean, there's always something you need to pay attention. Oil temperature is, is not too bad, though. I mean, it's high, yes, but not super high, so I'm not gonna stress about that. And I'm not gonna stress about carb temp. We'll keep this for a while, and it should even out everything. Oh, carb temps are zero, that's why our automated, our flight engineer changed them when he was setting up cruise power. So he likes to mess with these levers. It should fix it now. I guess plane would have had a flight engineer, right? Do what? Plane would come with the, with flight yep, the artific artificial flight engineer, yes, he is there to yeah. help you. Because there is a lot to manage, to be honest. Like, he has a seat back there, so I fold it down, but yeah, it's, that's where he is sitting. Okay. Has somebody to optimize things for you. Okay, hopefully this will get better and we will pick up more speed, but looks like we are not, we are not passing 220-ish. We are stuck there, so I think we have to live with this, and I don't know if this is a problem with the aircraft, this is a problem with something else, I'm not sure. Well, that's fine, I mean, that's better than your goal 160 before, that was the low bar. Yeah, I mean, I think we are doing just fine in terms of cruising and getting where we need to be. It's gonna take a little bit longer, that's, that's what it's going to do. We have like how much fuel? It's not. Sh is it not, not showing? No. Flight plan remarks. Fuel report. Current performance. We have consumed 2.1 pounds of fuel, and we are almost halfway through. So that means I have way too much fuel in this aircraft, which makes me to go and burn more. You know what? <laughs> turn the water injectors, turn the superchargers on, but I think that would be a bad <laughs> idea to do right now. Maybe you can dump some of it. <laughs> oh, jettison? Do we have jettison in this aircraft? Uh -huh. oh. Fuel jettison, do we have? Yeah, any uh, aircraft actually have that modeled? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Third crew member Curious. map lights. Oil tank selected, left inbound, right inbound, blah blah blah. Of oil transfer. So this is the auxiliary oil transfer pump. Prop the ace the ICER on meter. Okay. I go down like this. Automatic feathering, emergency instrument and power instrument lighting. Nope. I don't see a fuel jettison switch or something here. So CO2 bottle selector, CO2 discharge, those are all fire caution systems and fire emergency systems. Cockpit warmer. Yeah, we know normal. Alright. Alright, cabin heat. Tail. Our uh, cabin can use a little bit more, I guess. Nope, I don't see a fuel jettison system to be honest. Yep. The old days, when you lit on fire back then, you just burned. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when you catch fire, I don't know, you just, just, just use the fire handles to, you know, put out the fire, but that engine is long gone. I think you cannot start it again. And when you crash, you just crash like a man. Way too much fuel on mine. <laughs> Are we picking up the signal yet from the other VOR station? No, still nothing. And that is the only one close by. Do we have an ADF or anything somewhere close? And I need to check the localizer frequency because I'm planning to do an ILS to runway 01 
and the localizer frequency is 111.3 so let's keep that in mind and very interesting I wonder here is the thing I wonder if I can change the fuel quantity when I'm here up in the air we want to try and <laughs> we might crash or do something stupid mm. here so I don't know Yeah, that's not what I wanted. It's implied that it's supposed to be possible to dump fuel with this aircraft, according to some uh, um, kind of tutorial I'm looking at here from the DC-6. It's a real-life tutorial. Okay. It says ensure the area is free of other traffic. They just talk about precautions before dumping fuel. Cross feed, crop pitch, throttle lock. Tank selectors, is that something down here? That sure it is. What that red handle is. This one? This is the throttle lock. Those are cross feed. It says there's uh, four shoots to duck fuel from. But that's mixture, board that's shoots. mixture lock. Board shoots. And uh, there's rates that you can set for this. That's interesting. Maybe the preset. We talk about dumping uh, about 13 to 1400 pounds per minute from the inboard and upboard chutes. There's four. Oh, that's four chutes. Maybe it's not modeled in this aircraft, though. Yeah. This fuel yeah. must be dumped symmetrically, of course. It, uh, the thing out of balance. Yeah, I dumped some fuel, that's for sure. Look at that. I'm going down to like 9,000 pounds of fuel. And I'll probably start stop at 9,000. So maybe that's why we were slow. Maybe we will pick up some speed. Less weight. You would imagine so, but I don't know. Yeah, it looks like there is something else. It's not related to fuel or how heavy we are, as Mark said. It's something else that I cannot figure out. All right, let me keep an eye on the chat. There is a lot of stuff going on. Alright, Joanna Urbanska said hello. Falcon is here. Falcon, hello. I had lost track of chat a little bit. How high is the fuel level? Hey, Auro. Yep, no problem. I'm also bumming around the house today. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have that time out for thing that I need to do after the stream. Uh, I'm not sure if I will have the energy to do it, but uh, I, will, I purchased some uh, berry bushes that I need to plant before it's too late because they don't stay too long in that planters or pots. So I need to plant them. I have two raspberries and two blackberries that I need to plant outside. I was so planting. Super cold here. We just had two summer days and now we're going straight to January temperatures. <laughs> Low January temperatures. It's about six degrees in the rain here. Yesterday was really nice. Six Celsius or six Fahrenheit? Celsius. Okay, it's 13 here. Uh, Celsius. Yep, 13 Celsius here in Indiana. Number 22 and now we're going to be a high of seven, minus seven, but by. by 30 Celsius drop. Nothing unusual will break any records. <laughs> yeah, I'm itching to get my get on my bike again. So yeah, I was I was out um, metal detecting all yesterday in the sun. It was nice. Oh, the ground finally not a uh, frozen solid mass. So I can actually dig. I posted up some stuff in Discord, what I found. Oh, really? Yeah, I, uh, I found some old buttons, military buttons, and a really old coin, so... Hmm. So okay. you get rich now? Oh, yeah, yeah. rich on yes. silver, buddy. Yeah, yeah but yes. it's fun, isn't it? It's fun. I, I don't collect them for money, but do it for fun. Yeah. 
I used to do that. I still have some uh, probably in the house back in Turkey and my mom's uh, that I used to collect back in high school and you know, when I was a senior in high school. It's the oldest one I've gotten so far. Uh, 1845. Eight, oh that's my, that's six, old. Ooh. Six pence. That's so old. it was before Canada was even a thing. And we just oh, yeah. uh, that's old. Pence and, um, oh, looks like we are picking the signal from the other one, so... Uh, let's go so to... Between Victoria and Switch to Switch the frequency. Alright, let's see if we are picking it up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's go localizer. No, 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 you're turning to the wrong direction. It's 86, come on. Correct yourself. Probably just... Yeah, I probably, probably just uh, off by like a... I touched this of course uh, oh, and it decided to go over there. I don't know when it became 84, maybe I accidentally did it or maybe I did on purpose and I don't remember. Speed wise, I don't know why we are not picking <coughs> up that speed guys. I need to look it up. Maybe there is something that already started, uh, that people already started discussing with PMDG. And Mark is right, we should go up to 240, no problem. Oh, you know what, it could be delivery too. Because this is a custom one and sometimes deliveries have problems like this. Hmm. I never right. thought about that. <laughs> it's the paint. Oh no, there's a lot to learn with this one. It might be just something we never thought of. Yeah, it could be anything, I don't know, but I'm guessing it's delivery now. It does have that bug on it, that's kind of weird. Jump outside and take a look at this way. Mark is there. Captain Mega's in, did you land? Yes, now I did not land. You should be very close though, right? Um, actually, I, um... Uh, I didn't go that far. 214 or something. I'm not seeing you again. That same thing happened. Maybe it's just the distance you have from us, or maybe it's the server lag. I'm not able to see you in the stream again. Yeah, I always go to your server and pilot to make sure I can see you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I tried the Europe servers, but then it becomes too laggy on YouTube and if I switch servers, so unfortunately I need to use the closest one. Um, there is something off. I'm just stuck with like why this aircraft is not flying faster. That's what I'm thinking right now. Doing 260 ground speed, but we should be doing like more than that, 240 indicated. I'm not sure why it's not happening. We're in the DC-6. I'm gonna start PMPG. doing some research on this to see what's the, what might be the issue. It might be the livery though. I might have to check with the default livery that comes with the aircraft and see if that's, uh, that's what's causing this. But we are getting close, so... MDG's uh, DC-6 is on sale right now. Ooh, how much? Ten dollars off. Ten dollars off, so that's coming down to 49? It's uh, 59. 59. <laughs> oh, it was 69, right? Yeah. So we'll see what their pricing will be Same. about the 737. So next week they are going to reveal the release date of 737. There you go, Arrow. You can uh, check it out. Yep, next week the 737 release date will come. Oh, 
Oh boy. Uh, they will announce when they are going to release it. Just Flight already said they are going to release the 146 Professional around April 25th. So, I told you guys, these two months, April, May, will be very expensive. Even June, because MD-80 is also coming from Flight yes. and Dog. So, I'm just holding out for that one, that 737. Yeah, I'm waiting for it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to get the 146 too. The MD-80 is a fuel tanker, right? Ow. Uh, they have a fuel tanker too, yes. They used to use that as a fuel tanker, a cargo plane and a passenger plane. And a, I think they also had a um, hybrid, like half cargo, half passenger. Because of the size and the four engines that aircraft had, it was a it was it was used as a city uh, city hopper and cargo transport plane into busy cities where they have this uh, this this noise level restrictions. That's why they call that aircraft a whisper jet. I don't think it whispers by any means, but. It's 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 nick nickname. We're, we're right underneath the flight route, uh, even though we're far away from the airport. That they like to take a turn over our area. It's pretty loud. Yeah. So we'll see. They say the 737 from PMDG has everything custom coded, so it's not using a single piece of Asobo code, which is great to hear, and that's what. To me, that's what justifies your pricing, right? So, yeah. like, look at Concorde. I mean, fine, yeah, good aircraft, you can go max speeds and whatnot, but half of your plane is like a Sobo code. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it, man. I didn't like it that much. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <coughs> purchase a plane or purchase anything from DC Designs going forward. And Aerosoft too. I, I, I respected Aerosoft as a developer, but Twin Otter and what they did with the CRJ is just probably flushed their reputation down the drain in the flight sim community. A lot of people doesn't trust Aerosoft anymore, at least the ones that I know. Love me. Where are we at? So. We are roughly at a uh, hundred mile away, I guess, right? That's what our BME was showing. Was it? Yep, hundred miles. Oil temperature still hot. Cylinder head temperatures looking okay, oil temperatures a little bit high, which is fine. I'm not going to stress about it. We'll keep this uh, setting for now until we reach descent or top of descent. Yeah, I noticed that too with the uh, textures on that Concorde. They thought they were kind of weird and lackluster. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Concorde. Is a, I mean, to me, it's a disappointment. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't justify its price. That's what I'm saying. It's no different than a car or the plane. Okay. Only thing they were able to sell it for that price is because one, it's an airliner. Two, it can reach to supersonic speeds, and everybody was like, ah, I need to go supersonic. I want to hear that sonic boom. 
it had a hype. So now that hype is gone, I don't think anyone else is going to be interested in that aircraft. Yeah, if you watch on YouTube, the, it's... Yeah, our, I mean, it's I... It's not a, a rush on the jet plane. Auro is also saying, I agree with your assessment on the Concorde. Sloppy, lazy textures and like laziness, I'm telling you, I was going through the some of the config files to see if I can fix a couple things about uh, fuel transfer because my CG was not moving. And what I noticed in those config files is like there is a lot of, there are a lot of leftover code in there, say, mark this uh, F-15 Eagle. Okay. Mm. So they use their F-15 code in Concorde and they would, didn't even bother with changing the naming convention of the code as the, like the headers to Concorde from F-15, they left it. And I'm pretty sure half of that aircraft code that makes it go supersonic is coming from that F-15. So that's how lazy work it is. You just make one aircraft, copy and paste, make it another one and sell for 40, come on now. Did it handle like the F8 or F15? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have the F15. Oh, Captain Megazenon just appeared on my windshield now. There he is. Yes. Yeah, I ha I don't have the F15. I don't think I will pro I will consider anything from DC designs. Or let me make this statement. Going forward, it's going to be well-known developers like PMDG. Okay, just flight. And I'm gonna watch the reviews before I pull the trigger on any aircraft going forward, except these two that I have talked about, the 146 and the 737. I will probably uh, go ahead and purchase them, but it stops there. MD-80, I need to see some videos and reviews. Anything else coming out, I need to see some videos. And GA aircraft, I think I'm not gonna purchase anymore. The last one I will probably consider is going to be the Milvis Cessna 310. The, uh, it will stop there. Pilatus, Pilatus, whatever you call it. 12 uh, the Porter, the, the turbo prop that they announced. Is what the, do you uh, think about the uh, Cessna 414? 414, I think it is going to get better. But, personal opinion here, it's not going to get to a detailed level where it's, it is uh, able to justify, justify its price, okay? If they don't implement some failures like Milvis is doing for their 310, it's a plane that flies nice and nothing more, okay? What was you the have price of that one? 40, 39.90. Okay. So to justify forty dollars of price, you have to give some extra. You know, you have to have something that can fail during the flight. And the Milvis 310 is going to be around the same price. It's going to have system failures or engine failures uh, and passenger simulation built in. So that I can understand why they are asking that price. Cessna 414. Right now, it's a nice-looking aircraft with, you know, a better flight model than any other aircraft that I have flown, except the Just Flight Arrows, and it's 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 just that nothing more than that. And you can enjoy and have the same feeling from a Coronado aircraft. Yeah, maybe if you can get it on sale for like 30. And think about Boeing 247. That aircraft is sold at $20. And you can't believe how much custom coding went into that aircraft. And when That's I think about good. that aircraft and how much price the developer is asking for it, that much yes. work. I've seen your videos. And then the when I think about the Concorde and Cessna 414, None of those aircraft are able to justify the fr uh, their price for me anymore after seeing that developer is selling their pro his product for $20 and it has a lot of custom coding and failures it's, it's and... It's so difficult to start the engines. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I agree. 
but it's super realistic too, right? Like yeah. for the first time in Microsoft Flight Simulator, there is something that we can say, I own this aircraft. It's saving its states. If you leave a switch on, when you load it again, that flow switch will be turned on. And you have to properly shut it down uh, when you are leaving the aircraft. It's saving its states. It has failures. Have you ever burnt a fuse, Captain Magazine? No. I overloaded <laughs> the f I overloaded the electrical system and burnt fuses and replaced couple fuses, which is great. I I failed my engines multiple times. They caught on fire. Uh, I lost both engines mid-air and ditched the aircraft three, four times. So it's challenging, but it's sort of like kind of fun type of challenging you know but you needed to buy the plane again for 20 dollars <laughs> yeah if you kill it you have to buy it again no 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 that doesn't work <laughs> like that <laughs> but that's I what i'm saying more, like, uh, the, uh, the other like developers that. i think they have a lot to learn from this wing 42 who is the developer of this boeing 247 okay like i look at the other simulators that were before the simulator and like prepared 3D and stuff. You can do a walk around on the plane and look for stuff. Yep. I mean, I don't think the, it uh, is not impossible. I don't think it's not impossible for for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the Cessna 414 has already cameras set for the uh, pre-flight checks or the walk around. Okay. So it's in the tablet. You click. It takes you to to the spot where you need to be checking. You know the the wheel or the intakes or engine cowlings, whatever it might be. Okay. So if you are willing to custom code, you can make this. You can make the pilot remove the uh, the tags that you see around the aircraft by clicking yeah, those. You can make locks. the pilot remove the uh, engine covers. Right? You can make the pilot remove the chocks, uh, pitot heat covers. It's, it's possible. It, it's, the question is, are you willing to custom code these things and try to find a workaround around the SDK? Because, well, SDK is, is not just limiting everything. If, if an op developer can pull this off, like the Boeing 247, why others cannot? So that's my question. I don't even yeah, have to be animated. There's no standards for this simulation, even from the so-called approved developers. I mean, to me, it's the easiest thing to say the SDK is not where it needs to be to simulate these functions. Well, okay, there's someone custom coding those simulations and not waiting on the SDK. And if you are not like... I don't know, man. I mean, they don't understand that they are asking the price of the platform that people are using to fly their products and I mean the hardware yeah and they are not willing to a big investment to get to do it right and yeah people are getting disappointed by the software yeah no i, I just get more and more curious about explain 12. explain 12 i'm curious about that too about Captain Magazine, the problem with having multiple simulators is I have a bad habit of spending too much money on everything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't help. But um, they were saying Explain 12 will come with a discount for Explain 11 owners. Okay, and I own Explain 11 and I own the Tolis A319. So maybe I should record a video with the A319 to show the differences between that and A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Even with the fly-by-wire mod, that aircraft is still short than a Tolis A320, A319 in X-Play. That's for sure. But I think the Microsoft Flight Simulator will become the better simulator over time. Because X-Plane 11 is be, has been around for, what, almost 10 years now. In 10 years, think how much development will go into Microsoft Flight Simulator. 
and it has a lot more it has far more superior resource uh, management in terms of what your hardware is explain is not like that it's just using a single thread on your CPU so you have a multi-core processor explain 11 is only using one core of it and the other cores are not used which is but which was well explain 12 hopefully fixes it I don't know in 10 years Microsoft will finally give a world update to Canada but this is the, this is the superior uh, simulator okay there is no way explain will render the world uh, like this okay Yeah, I mean, X-Plane will not have the world rendered like this in real time because they don't have access to that kind of data that Microsoft has. So that's a reality that we all need to accept. But if there comes a Google Map add-on or something? Yeah, if they start to use Google Maps, which is free, or make an agreement with Google and use their data, then yes. I guess you may be aware, SimPilot, there's a, a mod that allows you to import Google Maps. Microsoft, yeah, I know, I know. I haven't, I haven't tried that one, because the ground textures. I think I was happy with what I had from Bing Maps, but maybe I, think, I should I try and see the difference. For roadways were better, like you know, a lot of times in the, in the Bing, it's just a, it looks like a grassy field, the roadway, but in fact, you know, it's paved. Ah, uh, okay. Pavement. There's also mods out there. With improve the roads all right that that, yeah, I'm that makes sense a mod all the time I'm gonna try that then so uh, one, but one, the, one today I'm using the um, being new being maps or the updated being okay yeah. yeah I'm just using whatever is default right now which is I believe the Bing let's yeah, check here good. real quick oh man it's that engines are super loud and the uh, Google one didn't look as vibrant. Yep, I have the. I think just I just think it looks a little bit more real. Yeah. With Google, you mean? When I fly around, yeah. When I fly around where I live, okay. it just looks more real. I'll I'll give it a try. We are near our. It's, yeah, it's it's it's, it's high bad. res. The Google Maps data is have more more resolution than I think, uh, being. Oh, there's something. The, the colors here where I live are not that vibrant. <laughs> like it would be. <laughs> it's more gray like in the videos. <laughs> I think Bing is. Maybe it looks better in many places. Hold on, guys. Give me a sec. I'm still streaming. It's my son asking what am I doing. So I don't know what you think I'm doing. <laughs> 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 uh, but we are getting close. So top of descent in very short uh, time. Yeah. 38 miles to the VOR. I think we should tell uh, the AFE to set ourselves for descent. descent. It's gonna set 26 inches and we're gonna start our descent. And I need to bring up the chart for that ILS approach. 3000. So we will descend at probably 500 for. Oh, altitude hold goes off. Now we can descend. I think we are going to descend at 7 800 feet per minute for now and monitor where we are. And see if we need to descend a little bit faster as we approach the airport. I'm almost in the final one. Are you? Okay. Yeah. I am coming. I'm waiting for you. Alright. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, when we reach that VOR, 
which is in 32 miles we will be in range so we need to do in range uh, approach landing checks and before landing checks back to back very quickly with the artificial flight engineer and we should be able to uh, and I think it looks like I'm picking the signal from the localizer too oh no that's wrong I'm not because I haven't set that up one 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 decimal three on nav two now I will be able to see the localizer when we start to pick that up because I don't think we can pick it up from this far away yet so we are yeah we are not that close to the localizer but we are descending nicely isn't it just line of sight though those localizers like you're over the ocean and the airport's on the edge of the ocean Yep, right there. So I need to pass this little stretch of land. And then the airport is after that. Right right there is the VOR in front of us, right? And then the airport is all the way over there somewhere behind those clouds. Because it's some pretty blue waters. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? Is this still considered Caribbean? South America, but I don't know. Caribbean Sea. Me, it is. <laughs> is this the Caribbean Sea? Yeah, it is Caribbean yeah. Sea, right? And some guys uh, on chat says uh, your mic volume is kind of low. I noticed that Tim, your My mic is too low. low. Like, Hold on. No, yours is low, and models is like a big power mic, like on those old CDs, always <laughs> Um. <laughs> Okay, Iwan is saying, Iwan, is it mine or it changes them? I mean, my 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 mic is like, well, okay, my mic is pretty loud right now, so I don't know. Auto just dominates. Uh, the engine uh, sounds are like too too loud. Settings. That's fine. Uh, you can change. You can turn each person. Oh yeah, but. Change their volumes. Mark, yours is a little bit loud at times. I have a hard time hearing you, but that might be due to your Discord settings. If you right click on the name in the call, uh, you can change their audio level. Never pay attention to Discord. I find it randomly. Some people are like randomly really loud on there, and I just turn them down. Yeah, mine is set to 110, so I sh think that should be enough for the most part. Okay, I'll turn model down to 80. Alright, how are we doing altitude-wise? So, coming up to 9000, what's the DME showing? We are at 17 miles, so we need to descend a little bit faster than this. And increase the descent rate. This should help us catch up. Um, there is still no signal of the localizer. One one three decimal. One 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 decimal three. Is that correct? Is that what I tuned there? One 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 decimal one three. decimal three. Yes, that's right. Yep. One 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 decimal three. Still no sign of the localizer. So we might pick it up later on. Altitude is nearing to eight thousand. We have 14 miles. Alright, so we have 5,000 feet to lose, so that's 15 miles roughly at this descent rate, I guess. So we should be fine in terms of altitude. We can even just try to descend a little bit slower. to get us where we need to be and let's see we have still after that VOR we have 14 miles to the airport too so that will give us the time to descend down to 3000 which is the altitude we need to capture the glide slope at 
4.8 miles to the airport. Final approach course is 010, so we will set that up later on. When we start. still fly in the VR? Uh, I'm flying in the VR occasionally when I'm flying by myself. Uh, didn't get too much flight time over the last 10 days. It's the work is busy and you know the Ramadan when I'm home I have less energy left. And the you dinner know, is late because of Ramadan because I, I eat around 8.20. I can't eat until then. Oh, pretty wheel right there. Oh, look at that. I've been the same way. I've been uh, Ooh, I like busy this. and then I get home and... Yeah, that's why I didn't get enough, enough time in VR, but yeah, I'm flying in VR most of the time. It's VR when I'm flying by myself. I don't go back to uh, my the monitor. <laughs> it's, it's just hard to, hard to do it that way anymore, because thanks to you... <laughs> <laughs> You spend a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So I'll go back to out of localizer. Okay. I will switch the frequency uh, when we pass over that VOR. Because it is 4.5. I'm going to set the final approach course of 010 and switch the frequency. Come on. Alright. And that should get us to where we need to be, here in a little bit. How are we doing altitude-wise? 5,000? Okay, I need to keep an eye on that and stop descending at 5. Now I think we can go to the localizer. It should line us up with the runway. And let's descend a little bit slower. Let's do the in range. Green turbine. Normal. Fuel booster box. When I'm, I'm flying airliners, I, I think yeah, the monitor is just as good. Yeah, I mean, airliners in VR, they are also great too. I have flown the CRJ in VR on a full flight from, I think, Hamburg to Copenhagen. Something like that. It was it was awesome, and it was a night flight. So okay, yeah, yeah. yeah but the three four hours, then it's uh, too long. Now it should set the aircraft for landing. We are coming down to three thousand, and I'm gonna see where we are. Alright, we are coming up to that waypoint where we are supposed to capture the glide slope. So coming up to 3000. And we will hold it at 3000. Oh, come on! No, you are not holding it at 3000. Oh, because we are on descent, I guess. It's already on the glide slope or something. Or I don't know anything can go wrong now, or if there's something off, because it's not, it's not, yeah, it's not taking that into action. Oh, there's the airport, right there. That's where we are landing, and I don't remember what my reverser uh, trigger was. So if I cannot engage the reversers, that's why, because I can't remember. I don't think that. Oh, there we go, final touches from the autopilot to correct us, and I think I'm gonna disconnect right now when he is done with that. And one more thing I forgot to do. Well, I'm in my drone flaps. Now. Uh, landing. I'm gonna set the flaps, I'm coming in too fast, to be honest. <laughs> That's for sure. It's the first time on the stream I've seen this aircraft going too fast. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful. 
beautiful city here, wow. Now it's my airplane. Good luck to slow down a little bit. The mark is coming. Not to the end. You're also using the mod? No. I have trouble with mods sometimes. Yeah, I have trouble with the same mod too, but after the update, it's, yeah, it's great. I need to remember okay, how to land this thing. Coming. It's too fast, I know that for sure. Gear is already down, you idiot. <laughs> nice. Alright, we jumped a little bit. Let's see if we can engage the reversers. We will use... Oh, no, 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 Look at that. Ah. See? I can't remember the reversers, so it's hard to control the speed. Uh, I was like a drift driver for a little bit. <laughs> But I think Forza Horizon. <laughs> what was what was the setting for my reversers though? Can't remember. That's the reverser thingy. Okay, I let's focus on, on getting back to body. getting back to the terminal building. Well, Are you using a throttle quadrant or? Yeah, I'm using the throttle quadrant, but I don't remember what I set for the thrust reversers. So that's part of the problem. So it looks like we need to turn around and go all the way back well terrible landing guys that's for sure the well, landing was good but uh, <laughs> after the landing <laughs> to slow down <laughs> it it should be it should be it should be i mean this this is was a go around easy because i was too fast at the threshold and wasn't finished with the checks so that's that's acceptable but well I'm not gonna stress it too long. Right, so let's go back. Park to somewhere. And that happens when you don't fly an aircraft for too long. You forget about it. I think like that makes sense why... Autopilot on the TBM last time. <laughs> I know, I mean, like... <laughs> I, I think it, it makes sense, like, why people are... Or why real pilots are just learning one aircraft and don't fly, like, <laughs> two different types. There's, there's, yeah. That makes sense to have a type rating and why it is in place. Because you forget, you know? I find the GA yeah, aircraft pretty it. easy, but uh, I can't learn too many like airliners at once if i go back to the cj4 i'll forget the a320 stuff uh, and vice I am, versa i am same too although i'm, I'm having a hard time remembering the aircraft every time i, I want to go fly. back to one of them i'm like uh, better look up the tutorials on it yep <laughs> so i'll go i'm flying the crj a lot so well, I, I think I need to get back to it. I'm not think? flying it a lot. And in VR, I think I like the GA aircraft better because you like to see around when you are flying yeah. in VR. So it's less airliner. So Captain Magazine poisoned me into VR. So that's why <laughs> I fly more GA. I used to fly airliners more than GA back in the day. So after VR, it changed. Where should we park? I'm looking for a parking spot. Maybe next to the aircraft? Do we have a parking spot next to that jet? Or airliner? There's an Avianca coming to hit us, so we'll just probably go here. Okay. We'll park right there. So next week, we didn't do the quiz, I completely forget about that, so... But we have, we have a little bit time left and we have we are a very few people in the stream right now so what you guys want to do next week where do you want to go what do you want to fly let's fly vr <laughs> <laughs> let's fly let's fly uh the oh. boeing 24 7 in vr and on that soon 
Oh, oh you're, you're, you're just going to kill me, don't yeah, you? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Sounds great. Looks like this airport is missing the jetways somehow. You, you can borrow my VR headset, uh, Moto. I can watch. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Borgi. No Borgi we'll also says hi. Uh, we are coming also. to the end of the stream, so you called <laughs> us at the end, but welcome. <laughs> Thanks for joining at the last minute. All right, guys, we will stop here. Set this up. So, AFE, Artificial Flight Engineer, let's help us get these things done. Are you from Norway? Not myself, but Captain Mega Zenon lives in Norway. Must have been hearing him. <laughs> um, on a serious note. Um, yeah. So, see, I'm hearing a jetway, but there is uh -oh. no jetway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Look like a jet. Haunted. One, two. Well, still eight years left until it's. Uh, yeah. Is that it's, uh, is that Avianca? You, Captain Magazine? Hmm? No, you're there. You are flying. Oh, I'm way back. You are in a lion livery. I don't know what lion. Oh, no, I'm using uh, sauce. Oh, you're Captain using SAS. Lines, okay. of course. <laughs> Mark is there. I'm just coming up. Uh, you probably had a better landing than I did, Mark. You probably had me. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was terrible. It was a uh, is a headwind about 15 knots, but it wasn't a crosswind, so it wasn't too too challenging in this plane. Uh, no oil pans. Just open the exits and stairs, and the. Well, I was watching your landing in the VR with the drone, and it okay. looked nice. That was gentle. I didn't have any yeah. trouble. Well, I, I used autopilot most of the way. There yeah. we go. Cut it at the last moment. Now our passengers can exit the aircraft. I can just go like this. Have a better view of the airport. And you guys at the same time. And beautiful coast. Like, look at that. That, that view is beautiful. Is oh beautiful. wow! But my neighbor used to live in this city. Oh really? My former neighbor. He moved back after a couple of harsh winters here. <laughs> so from here, Good our idea. options. If we are using a jet, uh, it opens a lot more possibilities. If we are using a GA aircraft, that is going to limit where we can go. But we can follow the coast and go to um, Simon Bolivar Airport. We have been there. I remember we have Santa Marta. I think we have been there. We need to go more inland, I guess, to start going towards uh, Brazil, maybe. Well, French Guiana. I like yeah. to see the spaceport there. Okay. They actually, render it. Spaceport. Oh, uh, what city? Um, not a good question. I like the sound of this spaceport. Yeah. Okay, I'm just looking at it. Guyana Space Center. Northwest of Kourou. Kourou in French Guyana. Guyana. Kourou. Let me see if I can find that city. That needs to go. No. Okay, is it this one? Hmm. No, that's not that one. Okay, let me do another search. S O O K. It's what's the code is. 
here uh, Oscar Oscar Trillo no there is no such airport it says hmm. I don't know if I'm typing it wrong or not seeing it Indiana Space Center. Okay, let's just see. But if I Space enlarge Center. the map, I can probably navigate ourselves there. Found it on. Uh, go here. And it's, oh, it's right okay, on the coast. I see now. It's on the coast. Yeah. Uh, so we need to follow the coast to. this open on another window so that I can cross-reference both it, uh, they must have an parallel. airstrip right at the space center I mean they must fly in there all the time so after oh, there it is uh, Koru Airport A -O -R -O. oh okay it's on the other sound the other end of the yeah. it's on the other F end of the land yep i i think i found it too though it's not showing an airport here is it this one no so <clears throat> Maybe it's not in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I'll just, I I get the call letters here. that is what that's a that's a long stretch. Either we need something supersonic to get there fast, or it's gonna so take like S -O -O hours. S O O K. S O O K. Yeah, that's what I was searching, but that airport is not in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I guess. Oh, too bad. Well, I'm not too surprised. Even uh, Dashing Airport south of Beijing isn't in there, and that's a major airport. Yeah. So that might be why. I mean, we can we can make our way there slowly, but next week where we can go, I don't know. We can follow the coast and go to Biohacha. Is this where it is? How long it is? It is about the same distance of today. Okay. Sierra Kilo, Papa Bravo. It's in a nice call, so I'm pretty sure there is a good uh, visual. There are good visuals during landing. And we can do any so any aircraft because that's the same distance we traveled what 200 miles an hour in this thing to 200 knots so any GA that goes 200 knots or less is fine and it's gonna take us and I can just measure it right now where is my browser window mm. all right let's get this on My flight plan, edit, to, what is this? What was the airport that I, t okay, Sierra Kilo, Papa Bravo. If we have to, if we have flown the DC-6 to the next destination, it would be an hour, 12 minutes air time, okay? So I think it's doable with any GA. So this, this can be our next destination because that's a nice little call that we can... Uh, and it's a national park that that area is that that coal and the sea and coral reefs whatever they might have there uh, we can nice. fly there sierra kilo papa bravo and you can join with any aircraft you please also the cessna 414 that's what i'm planning to use next stream yeah yep deal Wait. okay next week we are going deal. to sierra kilo papa bravo 
All right. Nice. Thank you guys. This was fun. Not so fun landing, I'd say. It was not great, but I need to practice my landings. And this is the other thing. Every time Microsoft updates this simulator, I have to relearn landing. I don't know if it happens to you guys as well. I just have issues sometimes with throttle control and that Icon A5. Even this plane went funny for a minute, but it recovered. Somehow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm thinking, guys? I don't know if Honeycomb Bravo is a great throttle quadro to use in this simulator because it has way too many conflicts and it's not working as intended. Um, and it's part of the reason is the way that they designed this. It's sending a constant signal every 10 milliseconds, like on, 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 and bugging the simulator. So I might go back to my uh, TCA throttle quadrant and maybe just put this, uh, you know, aside for a while until Honeycomb fixes their stuff. I have a problem controlling the uh, rudders and steering on landings, but <laughs> that's my, uh, I need a, a setup for my rudders. I still like this throttle quadrant. One, it is too big. I can't have this on my desk I need to mount it under my desk that's part of the reason I'm thinking about going back to my TCA quadrant for a while and I don't know I mean um, I was using sped next I don't know if you guys know sped next it's uh, yeah uh, that's I was using the the trial version to see if I can set it up properly for majority of the aircraft uh, so that uh, I don't have to switch controllers. Spadnex does it for you. You don't have to go to the controls options and switch every time you switch aircraft. Uh, that by itself is a good reason to have Spadnex. And our beloved friend Captain Mega Zenin did it again and he donated the 109 Norwegian crowns. Thank you very much, my generous friend. You never miss. Appreciate no your problem. support so far. So, so yeah, I might. The, thanks for all the great videos. Thank you Last very week. much. I might record this tutorial about Sped Next. That's a twenty dollar add-on or you know a pro software that is capable of sending commands to your simulator. So you know, I'm tired of changing controllers every time I change an aircraft. So that might be the only reason I might use that and purchase it, but. I'll record the tutorial if I end up doing it. And there is another one that they call uh, Axis and something. Can't remember. Uh -huh. That does the same thing. But yeah. Never heard about it. Yeah. Sounds uh, very, very nice. So you don't have yeah. to go here every time, controls options, and change the aircraft. Okay? Yeah, yeah. It does it for you when you set it up. Oh, that would be nice. So that's I worked. Might I might record a tutorial for that. Yeah, that's for sure. And Modo, thanks for the five Canadian dollars as well, my friend. Thank you very yeah, much. I was, I was trying to donate earlier, but my that's card, okay. I forgot they Don't, switched it on me. No, no big deal. Thank you very much. But, I can't uh, thank you. money because uh, Google malfunctions every time. Uh, don't, don't worry about it, Mark. Uh, I, I got you. Movies, <laughs> it's fine. I think I'm going to set up some... Uh, merch that you can purchase you know t-shirts or coffee cups i think uh that might be a way of doing it if you are you know if if you want to do it it's not necessary but this is i think the third time you are saying that so i would say don't worry about it but there will be more options in the future okay all right well, guys, thank you very much. Thanks for being here today with me in this stream, and I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot, except the landing part. <laughs> so, the thing you can walk away from, right? It's I, I loved your landing. Uh, yeah, I drifted, but we didn't die, so that's yeah. we didn't we didn't see that black screen saying you crashed. You um, should have seen this helicopter landing. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> last week, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I crashed. I crashed that one. Mark was the witness, <laughs> so I crashed in a helicopter that last week. I didn't directly see it, but I heard some explicitive, and I knew that something bad had happened. Yeah. Yeah, I was too fast <laughs> on First the descent, I guess. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I did crash. I do crash occasionally, guys. I'm not a perfect pilot. 
I don't claim to be one. I'm, so just, enjo <laughs> I'm just enjoying what I have. So, okay. <laughs> Not a perfect sim either, so whatever. Yeah. 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 Like the yeah. time that Nobody the, uh, but, the but sim I... spiked me into a hill with the 747 twice. <laughs> But I like our small small community. I like to think things a little bit more simpler, uh, yeah. and try not to complicate and try not to claim that okay, I'm the best YouTube content creator and the best virtual pilot here. No, I'm not. Definitely not. Okay, no, <laughs> and I'm admitting sure? that. So he's pulling in under 100k a year from this. You know, he's just a small timer. <laughs> <laughs> Who? We're having fun. We're having fun. That's, uh, yeah, uh, I'm here for the fun, you know, uh, and this will never, too. this will never become my money maker or the way of I to make a living. I will have a regular job, and this will be my hobby that we fly over the weekends and I shoot some videos and enjoy, enjoy the trip, I guess, and enjoy the journey. But I'll again, definitely buy a buy a mug. Oh sure, I sure. drink a lot of coffee. So. Yeah, I, I started drinking a lot of coffee too, so I need to. I'd, I need I'd be to curious that. to see what else you got too as well for it, stuff. It's already set up. I just didn't flip the switch to make it happen. Oh nice. Yeah. So, nice. Uh, I will share the what I have in there in Discord and maybe just get your opinion and add remote stuff before even it's real or if it's official. But yeah, oh, uh, we'll we'll talk about that more. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks awesome. a lot, guys. Uh, okay. And I'll see you guys okay. next week. Uh, yeah. All right. See, see you next care. week. Take yeah. care.